Hello everyone and welcome to chapter number 9 of Blender Master Course Advanced Tools in Blender. Watch the previous 9 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment. So the first advanced tool that we'll explore in today's chapter is the knife tool. But before starting that, there is one more important thing and that is you would be using these advanced tools in not more than 5% of the cases. In majority of the cases, we would be using the tools which are the basic tools that we have already covered in the previous chapter and in all the other chapters that we have covered so far in this course. So you might think why to learn them and the answer answer to this is simple. See, if you are learning a software, the best thing is to master it completely so that you would be efficient in everything or basically every feature of that particular software. Now let's come back to the knife tool. So the knife tool allows you to create custom edges in any direction on any particular face of your object. And to access this tool with the cube selected, we'll go to the edit mode and here is the icon for the knife tool and if I click on it my cursor changes to a knife now to make a cut using this tool you need to click any of the edges with the left mouse button click and a green square is created which is basically the vertex and now we'll click on the other edge click left mouse button and we see that a cut is created we'll also do the same with this edge press left mouse button and a second cut is created and to finalize the cuts you have to press enter and now if you go to the face select mode by pressing 3 let's turn off the knife tool first we can select these faces individually now and also we can edit these faces separately for example if i select this face and press e to extrude then this particular face that we created with the help of our knife tool will get extruded and not the other faces but always make sure that you start with an edge and end on an edge while using the knife tool to understand this let's enable this knife tool again and I'll create some random cuts from here and I left click here, here and here. So I made some random cuts on this face. But if I have to finalize my cutting, then I can't leave it here. I have to end it on one of the edges like this can be an edge. This is an edge. So I'll click left mouse button to finalize and to exit it. I have to press enter. Now I'll disable the knife tool. So always remember that while using the knife tool, you have to start with an edge and end on an edge. Now, the knife tool has four options which are pretty helpful in modeling complex bodies. But to use these options, we must enable the knife tool with its shortcut key only. And so the shortcut key for enabling the knife tool is to press K on your keyboard and the tool is now activated. And suppose you want to come out of the knife tool before selecting anything here, then you can do this with the right mouse button click. Now, the first option in the knife tool is the midpoint snap. For this, press K to enable the knife tool. So to use the midpoint snap option, you have to hold the shift key. And now if I hover over any of the edges, then it will automatically snap to the center of the edge. So if I left click here and with the shift key hold it, I take my cursor to this edge, then it will snap to the middle of the edge here. And if I left click, then it will create a cut here. And to finalize the cut, I'll release the shift key and press enter. So basically it will help you when you need to work more precisely and the cut has to be exactly in the middle. So that's the use of the midpoint snap option in the knife tool. Now the second option is the ignore snap option. For this, press K on the keyboard for knife tool. Now suppose I want to create a cut not from the edge but somewhere very near to it, like from here. But it would automatically snap the cut to the nearest edge if I try to create a cut very near to that edge, which I don't want to happen. So here we will use the ignore snap option so that it does not automatically snap to this edge and to enable this option hold control and now if I try to create a cut very near to this edge it won't snap to the nearest edge and the cut is created to finalize release the control button and press enter but as I already told you this tool must start from an edge and end on an edge so it would automatically connect my cut to the nearest vertices so this was the ignore snap option using which you can create a cut which is very near to the edge and it won't snap automatically to the edge which is near to it. Now the next option is the angle constraint. First let's come out to the object mode. Press X to delete this and add a new cube in its place. We'll tab into the edit mode. Now let's go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad. And now to understand the angle constraint option, press K to enable the knife tool. And for the angle constraint, press A. Now if I left click anywhere and drag my cursor then this straight line would appear and if I move my cursor away then this line would rotate at angles of 30 degrees and that's what the angle constraint tool does. It allows you to create precise cuts by giving you the option to cut at specified angles. Now suppose you don't want the angle to be 30 degree but to be like 10 degrees or 45 degrees or anything else. For that you can type that specified number for example if I want it at 10 degrees then I can type 1 0 
and now if I move it then it will move at angles of 10 degrees. Now suppose I want to create a cut from this point to this point. So I left click on this point here and now I'll move my cursor there at that point. Now I left click here also. So this would create this precise cut and now I'll press enter to escape the knife tool mode. So the angle constraint option allows you to create a cut at any specified angle. You just have to type in the angle after pressing the A button which is for the angle constraint option. And the last one is the cut through option and for this we'll press K for the knife tool then press C to enable the cut through then press left click from here to here and again click left mouse button and now we can see that it has created a complete cut even on the faces that I couldn't see from that angle before and now I'll press enter to exit the knife tool mode so that's what the cut through tool does and now we have completed all the options in the knife tool and now the second tool for this chapter is the bisect tool but before that I'll type into the object mode and press X to delete it and I'll add a UV sphere in its place now for the bisect tool option you have to tap into the edit mode then click here for around two seconds and you will see a menu where it's written knife and bisect so we'll go for the bisect tool and to see what it does we left click here and drag a mouse cursor like this and release the left mouse button click so it has basically made a loop cut around the uv sphere and you may also notice this gizmo that is here and if i left click and move it then it would allow me to move this loop cut or else you can also click on bisect that is written here and from here you can change the location and even the rotation of your loop cut and if you click on the clear inner option here then you will get rid of the mesh that was opposite to the direction pointed by this gizmo and if I turn it off and if I click on the clear outer option then we'll get rid of the mesh which was in the direction where this little gizmo is pointing and with one of these two options that is clear inner or clear outer selected if I click on fill then it will create a face along the loop that was used to bisect the object and now it's time for the third and a very simple tool in blender the spin tool for this I'll delete this UV sphere and we'll add a select here let's rotate it in x axis by 90 degrees and press 3 in the numpad for the side view now we'll tab into the edit mode let's scale it up in y direction now suppose you want to make a pipe out of it that goes from here and like this in that case we have to use the spin tool and to access the spin tool you have to click here now we'll select the vertices on this side and here you can see a little gizmo which basically tells you about the direction in which the spin tool will work and also we notice that all the vertices are not selected so let's select all of these vertices and to change the direction of this spin tool we can click on here x or y or z but for our purpose we would need it in x direction now we'll go to the side view again by pressing 3 now before using the spin tool we have to place a cursor over the pivot point as per the direction in which the spin tool is required to work so we'll place our 3d cursor over here by pressing shift and right mouse button and now if I click on any of these plus symbols and drag it like this then the spin tool will begin to work and if I release it and press E to extrude the face then we see that it has made this pipe like structure so that's how the spin tool works in blender and now the fourth tool on our list is edge slide and vertex slide tool for this we will tap into the object mode and we'll delete this pipe object let's bring back cursor to the world origin by pressing shift plus C now we'll add a cube here let's tab into the edit mode and press 2 for the edge selection mode and we'll select this edge now suppose I press G and try to move this edge then it will move like this but it might be possible in certain cases that I do not want to move it like this but I only wanted to slide it along the faces and that's where the edge slide mode comes into play for this double press G and now if you try to move the edge then you will notice that it is not moving away and it is only sliding or basically moving along the faces and that's how the edge slide tool works it basically restricts the movement of a particular selected edge by sliding it along the faces of the particular object which are adjacent to it and to finalize we left click and the same is available for the vertex also so press 1 for the vertex mode we'll select this vertex let's zoom in a bit and if I press double G then instead of freely moving it it will basically slide it only along the adjacent edges and this is the vertex slide tool and you have to press left click to finalize and now the last tool on our list is the shrink flatten tool so let's come out of the edit mode press X to delete this so to understand this the object that we are going to add is the monkey or the Suzanne model now let's tab into the edit mode and press 3 for face select mode now select some of the faces from the top let's select these two faces and to enable the shrink and flatten tool you have to click here so I'll press on this icon now if I drag this gizmo upwards we observe that the two faces get expanded or flattened up similarly if I left click and bring this down then we observe that the faces will get shrink and that's what the shrink flatten tool does moving this gizmo upwards will flatten or expand it and moving this downwards 
would shrink in it. And this brings us to the end of all the advanced tools in Blender. I hope you like this chapter. Our next lecture is gonna be on chapter number 10 that is introduction to modifiers. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.